Father, we praise you for being so good to us. Thank you that you are with us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We give you praise and we give you honor and we glorify your name in all the earth. Be exalted, O Lord. I pray for your divine intervention, divine uh, presence and divine provision to be upon us. And I pray today, O Lord, as we celebrate your goodness, as we celebrate your faithfulness, be enthroned, be exalted. Come on, let's open our mouth and begin to praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of Jesus, our Lord and King. Thank you, Father God. Come on, let's continue to worship and exalt His name. God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. We have the source of hope. He is our Abba, Father, our source. And we will never run out of supply. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord, for giving us this wonderful opportunity where we can come boldly before the throne of grace to receive mercy and grace in times of need. I declare that all who are sick will be healed in the name of Jesus. Those who are in need of miracles, you will receive your miracles in Jesus' most powerful name. And I also pray, Father God, for those who are in need of peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Receive your blessing. Receive your portion in the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. We bless you and we thank you. And I pray that you will continue to enlarge the capacity of our spirit as we continue to partake the impartation of your word. I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, create that hunger, create that thirst in our spirit to, uh, to long for your presence, to long for your word, to long to have intimacy with you, and most especially to long that every soul na aming mga katagpot, mga kaharap, ay madala namin sa iyong presensya. Maraming maraming salamat po sa iyo ang kalahat ng kapurihan, sa iyo po ang lahat ng kalawalatian karangalan sa makapangyarihang pangalan ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. Ang lahat ay magsabi ng Amen and Amen and Amen. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Glory to God. God is good and He is faithful forever. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to our worship celebration. Ito po ang Ambassadors for Christ Church International uh, located in Taguig City. At kayo po ay aming binabati at wini-welcome ng isa pong napaka uh, pinagpalang araw, araw ng Panginoon na kung saan sama-sama tayong dudulog sa kanyang banal na trono, kung saan doon tayo makatanggap ng mga biyaya, doon tayo makatanggap ng habag upang sa lahat ng ating kailangan tayo po ay kanyang mabibigyan. Ang Diyos ay buhay, hindi siya patay. God is not dead. Our God is alive. And if God is, our God is alive and is ready to answer all our prayers, He's ready to heal the sick, He's ready to provide those who are in need, and He's ready to release His miracles to all of us in order for us to praise and worship Him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Purihin ang Panginoon! Sa mga kabubukas pa lamang ng kanilang Facebook, live rin po tayo ngayon sa YouTube. Please do us a favor to share this message to your friends and to your loved ones so that sila po'y makarinig din ng sariwang minsahe ng Panginoon. We are in the continuation of our study entitled Preparation in the Year of Kingdom Manifestation. The prophetic word for the year 2023 is very clear. It is the year of kingdom manifestation. When you speak about kingdom, it speaks of the rulership of God, kingdom, king's domain. At ito po ay mahahayag. Paano po ang mga ebedensya na atin pong makikita pag tayo po ay kasamang nakaranas sa kingdom manifestation this year? We will expect, we can expect God for divine intervention. We can expect God for supernatural provision. Kasama po ito mga kapatid. Ang pagkilos ng Diyos sa bawat sa yugto at bahagi ng ating buhay ay napakaliwanag. And I personally experience it and I know that you experience it also na kung saan ang intervention ng Diyos ay Kanya pong ipinapahayag at pinapakita sa inyo. Supernatural provision. Okay? The provision, when you speak about supernatural, it is a godly provision. 
And God, when it speak, when you speak about provision, God never runs out of supply. There will be extraordinary protection. Why? Because as long as we are here on earth, there is a devil who is trying to destroy our lives and wants to abort our destiny. That is why God in the year of kingdom manifestation this year, 2023, is doing his thing. He is really moving powerfully over our lives. There will be extraordinary protection. Psalms 91 will be much alive in the lives of God's people. What else? There will be ministry acceleration. There will be career promotion. There will be business expansion. Okay, no power, wealth creation, influence penetration. We will be entering domain, even the domain of the people in high places. There will be a stature ascension. There will be favor recognition. There will be anointing multiplication. Hallelujah. And last but not the least, there will be character fortification. The foundation of all these blessings in the year of kingdom manifestation is none other than character fortification. Even how anointed you are, palagi natin sinasabi, character, okay, uh, anointing without character is disaster. So mahalaga po, isa po sa inuhubog ng Diyos in the year of kingdom manifestation is the stability and the integrity of our character. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will continue to empower us, continue to release His grace for all of us so that we will possess a character that is pleasing before Him, that serves as our foundation so that the moment the year of kingdom manifestation is already done in our lives, then we will be able to carry the mandate and carry the, uh, carry the assignment that God had uh, given us at ito po ay ating madala sa completion. Now, the year of kingdom manifestation, it's very important to position ourselves to be partakers in the year of kingdom manifestation. Okay? Number one, there should be clarity of purpose. Purpose is the re reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. Purpose in life is very important because your purpose, okay, will lead you, okay, to your direction. So, kung atin pong titignan, the clarity of purpose, even the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Sabi rito, John 4.34, My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of Him who sent me and finish His work. Isa pong patunay na pinakita sa atin ng Panginoon that His life on earth was a life full of purpose. Si Cristo po nabuhay 33 years and a half according sa mga Bible scholars. But those 33 years and a half was a fruitful, powerful life because his life was purpose-driven. And sabi niya, my food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish the work. Klaro kay Kristo ang bawat araw, bawat oras, bawat minuto, bawat segundo sa kanyang buhay. At 33 and a half years na kanyang pamumuhay, very powerful. He committed 30 years in preparation for his ministry and he only ministered for three and a half years, but he was able to turn the world upside down. Ano po ang minsahe sa atin? Hindi po binabasihan yung tagal at haba ng buhay mo sa lupa. Ang pinagbabasihan at mahalaga sa Diyos, yung impact, yung dating, yung nagagawa ng buhay mo. Ano nga ang saysay kung mahaba ang iyong pamumuhay dito sa lupa at mahaba at malayo, mahabang edad ang narating mo kung wala namang impact o dating ang buhay mo sa buhay ng iba? Si Cristo, 33 and a half years, He ministered for three and a half years, but He was able to turn the world to turn the world upside down. At even at this very moment, yung kanyang ministry is still powerful, touching lives, changing lives, transforming lives. So wag tayong maghangad doon sa haba. Ang ating hangarin ay magiging kapakipakinabang ang buhay natin. And we can only do that if we have a clarity of purpose. Ano po ang purpose ng Cristo? To work the works of God. It's not to work His work. Ang kanyang gagawin, yung pinapagawa lang ng Diyos. Kaya nga, I've heard a message that says, do what you are born to do. Kaya kung mayroon kang unang gagawin sa buhay mo, kapatid, in the year of kingdom manifestation, make sure na alam mo na ang pinapagawa ng Diyos sa'yo. Because if you're doing the things that God wants you to do, just like the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord will go with you. And if God goes with you, what will happen? you will be successful in everything you do. Joseph, 
Nung siya po'y nakaranas ng matidig pagsubok sa kanyang buhay, one thing po ang iyong mababasa na consistent. Sa Genesis 39, chapter 39 to chapter 50, the Lord was with Joseph. Kaya kahit anong kalalagayan ni Joseph, dahil kasama niya ang Diyos, nagawa niya pa rin magtagumpay from pit to prison and from prison to palace. Tatlong pit po yan. Pit to prison, from prison to palace. Nangyari? Nangyari. Why? Hindi po dahil si Joseph ay mapagtiis. Hindi po si Joseph dahil si Joseph ay ma matuwid. But the one thing, the key, watch me now, the key that Joseph possessed is none other than the Lord was with him. Sa buhay na ito, mga kapatid ko, mahalaga po na sinasamahan tayo ng Diyos. Kailan tayo samahan ng Diyos? Kung ang ating ginagawa ay ang pinapagawa ng Diyos sa atin. Do what you are born to do. You are not born or you were not created to do everything. Please, pakisulat niyo po ito. We were not created to do everything. We were created, okay? We were created to do the things that God wants us to do. He wants us, God wants us to be made known for something na gusto niyang ipagawa sa atin. Kaya nga ho, pagka hindi mo alam ang purpose mo, gagawin mo ang lahat to the extent na parang ganito po yung kasimple eh. Ako po'y makapasok sa trabaho, ang una pong binigay sa akin, duties and responsibilities. At yan po'y nakalista, at yan lang ang ini-expect ng boss ko na gagawin ko. The moment ako'y gagawa, labas doon sa duties and responsibilities, ang tawag dyan, insubordination. So pag ikaw ay gumawa ng isang bagay na hindi pinapagawa sa'yo ng Diyos, huwag mong asahan na sasamahan ka niya dyan. Kasi ang Diyos is a God of protocol Kasama lang siya doon sa tao na gumagawa ng kalooban niya. Kaya mahalaga na yun ang unang alamin mo sa buhay mo, hindi yung gusto mo. Because before ka pa mangarap, may pangarap na ang Diyos sa iyo. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Ang pangarapin mo, yung pangarap ng Diyos sa iyo na matupad sa buhay mo. Malinaw. Yan po ang gusto ng Panginoon. By the way, what is destiny? Destiny is doing the things that God wants you to do, according to Dr. Jonathan David. Ganun lang kasimple ang destiny. Destiny is not a place. Destiny is not money. Destiny is not a good life. Destiny is doing the things that God wants you to do because your destiny is God. And if you are doing the things that God wants you to do, then God will go with you. Then you are already on your destiny. Hallelujah! Mali na po? Next. Purpose gives you clarity of direction. To fulfill God's unstoppable plans over your life. Ulitin ko ha. Purpose gives you clarity of direction. To fulfill God's unstoppable plans over your life. Malinaw. Yung purpose mo ang siyang magbibigay ng malinaw na direction sa buhay mo para matupad mo yung unstoppable na plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Jeremiah 29.11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Mga kapatid, kung ang ginagawa mo sa buhay mo ay ang pinapagawa ng Diyos sa iyo, at sa paggawa mo nito, nakakaranas ka ng mga pagsubok, problema, o hadlang, o hamon sa buhay, do not be dismayed Do not give up because clear kay Lord na yung plano na binigay niya sa iyo is not to harm you but to prosper you. Ano't ano man ang mangyayari, Romans 28, all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. Another verse na magigita natin dito, ang sabi, For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to His purpose. Kaya pag kang ginagawa mo ay layunin ng Diyos sa buhay mo, I-empower ka ng Diyos. At kung hindi man maganda yung nakikita mo, ito po ay kayang pihitin ng Diyos para gumanda at para marating mo at ma-fulfill mo ang purpose niya sa buhay mo. Napakadali, di ba? Many people today, because they do not listen to the word, I don't care Christians o hindi, marami din Christians hindi nakikinig ng salita ng Diyos. Mas inuunan sa libutan na kanilang pagsisisihan sa bandang Pulihan. Mahalaga na mayro ka salita ng Diyos. Today is Sunday. For us believers, it is, it is the Lord's Day. 
Dapat nandito ka, nakikinig ka. Kahit ito'y live streaming, pag nakikinig ka rito, tit lilinaw ang kaisipan mo, maging direksyon ng buhay mo. So purpose gives us life. Purpose gives us clarity of direction. Di ba napakaganda yung gigising ka sa isang sa bawat araw, alam mo ang gagawin mo. Hindi yung gigising ka sa isang araw, mag-iisip ka, saan ba ako pupunta? Ano ba gagawin ko? Boring ang ganyang klaseng buhay. But a life of purpose is a life that is full of passion. Yung buhay na yan, pag pinamuhay mo, may nagagawa at may nararating at may na-accomplish sa buong maghapon. Nagkanawan mo tayo. God's main purpose for your life is for you to love Him with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Number two, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Yan ang main purpose. At pag yan ay ginawa mo, ano mangyayari? Magiging makabuluhan ng buhay mo. Bawat kilos mo, ito ba'y nagbibigay karangalan sa Diyos? Bawat salita mo, napupurihan ba ang Diyos? Bawat iniisip mo, naitanghal ba ang Diyos? So everything revolves around Him. Everything revolves around God. And if your life is revolved, only revolves around Him, and your life is devoted to love your neighbor as you love yourself, then you are really living a life that comes from God. But if your life is suffering, if your life you become envious, you become selfish, and you only want the things that you want in this life without minding others and being a channel of blessings to all their needs, you are missing life. Hindi ang Diyos selfish. God is selfless. Binigay niya kanyang sarili para sa atin. Jesus gave himself away. And what God expect to every believer, every believer listening to me right now, learn to give yourself away. Yan ang problema ng marami. Gusto natin puro kabig, ayaw natin magbigay. Kung mahal mo ang Diyos, tuming ka sa akin, kung mananampalataya ka, kung mahal mo talaga ang Diyos, you learn how to give yourself away. Now, if you have a clarity of purpose, your purpose will lead you to your vision. There should be clarity of vision. What is vision? The ability to see beyond the natural realm. Okay, now, nakikita ng vision yung hindi nakikita ng natural mong mga mata. Sa Tagalog, ito po'y pangitain. At ang pangako ng Diyos sa kanyang salita, sa Proverbs 28 na 18, okay? ang nakalagay po, without vision, where there is no vision, the people perish. Mga kapatid, out of your purpose, dadalhin ka ng purpose mo sa fulfillment ng vision mo. At ang sabi ng Panginoon sa Proverbs 29.18, where there is no vision, the people perish. Mga kapatid, kailangan mayroon kang tinatanaw. Mayroon kang destiny, mayroon kang tinatanaw na hinaharap. Because whether you like it or not, vision comes from God. At ako po'y naniniwala, bawat isa sa atin, mayroon pong layunin ang Diyos sa buhay mo. Bakit nag exist ka ngayon? Because God is a God of purpose and He's also a God of vision. Do may may papakita sa iyo ang Diyos? Yan ang trabaho mo, Lord. I want to see the vision of what you're going to do with my life. So pag pinakita na sa iyo ang Diyos, pag pinakita sa iyo ng Diyos ang vision, what comes next? Yun na ngayon ang magkiging gabay mo. Kumbaga sa isang mangingisda, ang bawat mangingisda, ang una nilang kinakabisa ay kung nasaan yung parola. Yung parola, tawag dyan yung lighthouse. Bakit? Kasi sa oras na sila'y dumating sa mabigat na bagyo sa kanilang buhay, pag mayroong bagyo doon, ang una nilang hinahanap ka agad, tinatanda nila yung parola. Bakit? Sa oras na makarating sila, yun yung lugar na medyo mababaw at kaya nilang lumangoy at kaya nilang mabuhay doon. Your vision is just like that lighthouse o parola 
na kahit anong mangyayaring bagyo sa buhay mo, hanggat alam mo saan yung parola, pwede kang pumunta. Vision, sabi nga sa, 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 ano, ano, sa Habakkuk 2, 1 to 4, no? Vision is the ability to see beyond the natural realm. Produce passion. Nagpo-produce ang vision ng passion. Kaya a visionary believer, a visionary Christian, passionate yan. Saan? Sa fulfillment ng kanyang vision. If you want to see your visions come true, put a plan to it. Hindi lamang siya nagiging passionate, nagiging strategic siya. Habakkuk 2, 1 to 4. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer where I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Watch me now. The vision, hindi po ito nangyayari overnight. It takes time. At ang sabi, though it tarry, wait for it. Why? Because ang vision pag pinakita sa iyo ng Diyos, hindi ang Diyos magpapakita sa iyo ng vision at magbibigay sa iyo ng vision na hindi niya tutuparin. Because when God give you the vision, Together with that vision is the true vision. If you are not fulfilling that vision, then you are causing division. Malinaw? Kaya mahalaga ho na yung vision ay ibinigay sa inyo ng Diyos. Alam ko kayong nakikinig, may pinapakita sa inyo ng Diyos na vision. And that vision was intended by God for you. Just like me, the Lord showed me at the age of 19 a vision. At yung vision na yun, yan ang nagiging uh, doon nakaangkla ang aking passion sa pagkilos at sa pagsunod sa Diyos. And I created strategies for me to reach and fulfill that vision. You wait for it. Kasi ang sabi, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come and it will not tarry. Mga kapatid, When you speak about vision, maganda hong example itong si Joshua at si Caleb. Nung sila po'y nag-spy doon sa Hebron, pinakita po roon, yung sampung kasama nila ang nakikita mga higante. Pero si Joshua at si Caleb ang nakikita the land flowing with milk and honey. Bakit ganun? What's the difference? If you are a visionary person, you overlooked obstacles and you only focus your eyes on the vision that God had given you. Hindi po nakita ni Joshua at saka ni Caleb ang mga higante. Ang nakita nila, the land flowing with milk and honey. While the ten spies, ang nakita nila, hindi yung land flowing with milk and honey, ang sabi nila, mayaman ang, 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 uh, ang uh, lupain, pero nakita nila higante. Mga kapatid, Your vision will change your outlook in life. The way you look at things depends on the quality of vision you possess, how you handle the vision of God. At lagi niyong tanda nito at isulat ninyo kung gusto niyo. If the vision comes from the Lord, it seems impossible for you to fulfill. Ulitin ko. If the vision comes from the Lord, it seems it is impossible for you to fulfill. Why? So that you will not rely on your own strength and strategies. You will rely on God. If the vision na sinasabi mo na meron ka is kaya mong gawin at kaya mong i-fulfill, tiyak ako, hindi galing sa Diyos, galing lang sa'yo yan. Kadalasan ho, when God showed Joseph the vision that he will become great, and I strongly believe, pinakita sa kanya ng Diyos, one day he will sit on the throne of Egypt. Ito, ako po'y naniniwala na yung paniniwala ni Joseph na siya'y magiging great dahil pinakita sa kanya ng Diyos. Hindi ni Diyos, na-overlook ni Joseph yung 13 years na paghihirap na siya'y nahulog, hinulog sa balon, dinala sa presuhan, at siya'y nakaabot, nakaabot sa palas. Anong ibig ko sabihin? A visionary person overlooked obstacles 
A visionary person overlooks trials, difficulties because his eyes is already fixed on the vision that God had given him. What's the vision that you have for your life? Have you seen your life five years from now? Serving God? Enjoying life? A perfect life? Buhay na ganap at kasiyasiya? Have you seen yourself? Kayong mga nag-aaral, pag kayo nakatapos, you can put up your own company instead of going as an employee. Mga kapatid, hindi po sa atin mga mananampalataya, lalo na sa atin, hindi po imposible. Yung, yung imposible sinasabi niya sa libutan, napakaposwilbin yan sa Diyos natin. Kaya kailangan katulad tayo ni Joshua at ni Caleb na ang nakikita natin yung magagandang pangako ng Diyos. Ang sabi sa John chapter 10 verse 10 na parito lang magnanakaw upang magnakaw, magwasak at pumatay. Subalit na parito ako upang bigyan, ang, bigyan kayo ng buhay na ganap at kasiyasiya. When you speak about ganap, it's perfect. Kasiyasiya, joyful, abundant. Ito ang gusto ng Diyos ibigay sa atin. But the problem is, pag hindi po tayo aware at hindi tayo ganito nakikinig at nag-aaral ang salita ng Diyos, we are the one doing our thing. Kaya tayo yung naggagawa ng sarili natin vision, naggagawa tayo sarili natin plano, while in fact, God had already a vision for us, God had already a plan for us, ang gagawin mo na lang, lakaran mo. At para malakaran mo, kailangan gabayan ka ng salita ng Diyos. Kaya Psalms 9, 119, verse 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Saan mo yun dadalhin? Saan mo gagamitin ang word? Papunta sa fulfillment ng vision at plans and purposes ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Malinaw. Kaya lahat, kaya lahat, kaya lahat ng mga mananampalataya. Sunday, Sunday, wala sa mga church. Sunday, Sunday, kung wala kayong church, may live streaming, hindi nakikinig. You are losing not just half, but even the whole life na meron ka. Kasi itong minsahe na ito, maaring ito na yung susi sa breakthrough mo. Ito na yung susi para ikaw ay makarating sa napakagandang plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. But because sa katamaran at kamangmangan mo, hindi ka naglaan ng panahon. Pagkos inuna mo yung mga bagay sa libutan na nabubulok, mawawasak yung pera na magkakaroon ng tang at kalawang at na nakawin lang sa iyo. Mga kaibigan ko, mga kapatid, if the word is so strong today, it is not because the Lord wants to destroy you. Every word of God, the ministry of the word is to teach, to rebuke, to correct, and to train so that the man of God will be thoroughly equipped of every good work, thoroughly equipped to do and to display the glory and manifest the power of God on earth. Nagkaw naman tayo. Yan lang ang purpose natin. Wala ka pang pinagtaka. Bakit hindi ka pa kinuha ng Diyos? Nung maborn again ka. Bakit? Kasi mayroon pang mga tao na nakatingin sa buhay mo. At ang gusto nila makita, hindi ikaw. Ang gusto nila makita, hindi yung Kaya maana mo, bagong kotse, bang gusto nilang makita yung ginawa ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Yung pagbabago mo mula sa kawalan, pinagpala ka, mula sa pagiging walang-wala, ikaw ngayon ay mayroon ng mga biyaya. Yun ang gusto nilang makita. Yung buhay mo na napakasama noon, ngayon, binago ng Diyos at ginawang banal at matuwid, yan ang gusto makita. That's the purpose why you exist. That's the purpose. And then your purpose will lead you to your vision and that vision will create inside you passion and for you to become strategic. And the moment you become strategic, what comes next? Then you will fulfill what God wants you to do. Luke 2, 45 to 51. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem and looked for him, to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been 
anxiously searching for you. Verse 49, Why were you searching for me? He asked. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. Preparations while waiting for the fulfillment of our vision is very important. Because pag mayroon kayo may pag may pinapagita ng vision ang Diyos sa inyo, there's a big there's a big tendency na ikaw po ay magmadaling gawin ito. Kaya ang Diyos katulad ni Jesus, siya po ay pinasailalim sa leadership at sa uh, kumbaga pangunguna ni Joseph at saka ni Mary. So ano-ano ang iyong dapat gawin habang naghihintay ka sa fulfillment ng vision. Okay, number one, be patient to wait for the right time when God will going to launch you. Okay, Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says, For God will make all things beautiful in His time. Mahalaga ho sa fulfillment ng vision yung tamang timing. Note, God is more concerned on the preparedness of the worker more than the work. Kaya pag ikaw po ay mayroong vision at yung vision na yan ay napaka-imposible bilang tao na magawa, kailangan mo maghintay sa timetable ng Diyos, hindi timetable mo. Kasi kung timetable mo ang babasihan, gusto mo bukas agad, tandaan nyo atin, si Lord ay hindi po after sa ating lakas at sa ating abilidad. He is after the preparedness. Yun ang concern niya, yung preparedness ng worker to do the work. Jesus, nagpaiwan siya sa Jerusalem, nagpunta sa templo, nakipag-discuss na doon sa mga teachers of the law. Hindi po masama. Kasi yun pong alam niyang tama. Pero his age, is just around 12 to 13, ay hindi pa po akma doon sa plano ng Diyos. Pansinin niyo mabuti. Sa history ng Israel, for a man to become a rabbi, kailangan siya ay 30 years old. Malinaw na. That is why Jesus got baptized at the age of 30. Ready na siya maging rabbi, kaya tawag sa kanya, rabbi, raboni. Ano ibig sabihin? Teacher. Malinaw na. So, ang mahalaga, habang naghihintay ka ng fulfillment ng vision mo, i-prepare mo ito, maging pasensyoso maghintay ka sa tamang timing. Launching ng Diyos sa'yo. Malinaw na. Kasi pag ang Diyos ang nag-launch sa'yo, He will make all things beautiful in His time. Pangalawa, submission and obedience to the authority God had placed above us. Mary and Joseph didn't know, they didn't know kung ano talaga yung pinapagawa ng Diyos kay Kristo. Okay? Ano ibig sabihin? While waiting for the fulfillment of our vision, it is God's way of refining our character. Ilalagay ka sa isang leader na mismo yung leader, hindi niya rin alam kung anong pinapagawa ng Diyos sa'yo. Although ikaw personally, alam mo na. But because, para hindi ka magiging hilaw sa launching, para hindi ka magiging magaspang, kailangan ka ma-refine yung karakter mo. Because kung gaano kalaki ang vision na binibigay ng Diyos sa'yo, ganun din dapat kakinis ang karakter mo para hindi ka madupilas o di ka mahulog sa bitag ng kaaway. Kasi greater vision requires greater challenge. Nagkanawan tayo. So si Kristo ay medyo nauna. At talagang sabi niya, sa ni Maria, ba't mo naman kami ginaganito anak sa so, magod si Kristo? Di niyo ba alam, dapat nandito ako sa bahay ng aking ama? nakikipag na siya. But it not, it's not yet time. That is why, ang, ang ginagawa ng Diyos, although feeling mo, talagang ready ka nang i-launch, pero mayroon pa rin yung authority mo ay pumipigil sa iyo. You have to be careful. Kailangan mong mag-submit at kailangan mong maging obedient sa authority na binigay ng Diyos sa'yo 
At yun nga ang ginagawa ni Kristo. So, until such time na siya'y dumating na at the age of 30, at doon siya ng Diyos nilaunch, at the rest and the rest was history. Na makita natin, grabing power, grabe yung ginawa ng Panginoon. He moved and do the ministry to the power of the Holy Spirit where all the sick got healed, all that being uh, uh, tormented by the devil or being set free, lahat to, even miracles, very usual kay Kristo. Number three, keep increasing in wisdom, stature, favor with God, and favor with men. Upgrading is our priority to align ourselves to the frequency of heaven and become sensitive to the Holy Spirit's movement. Habang naghihintay siya ng fulfillment ng kanyang vision, mapapansin natin na si Kristo ay patuloy na lumago, nag-i-increase ang kanyang wisdom, ang kanyang stature, yung position niya, his position before God, and he secured the favor of God and even the favor of men. At nung siya ay ready na, prepared na, Makanig kayo mabuti mga kapatid. Hindi si Lord maramot para dalhin tayo sa napakagandang yugto ng ating buhay para maranasan ang buhay na ganap at kasiya-siya. Ang kanyang palaging uh, sinisecure ay yung ating preparedness, yung ating readiness, yung ating equipping. Kasi once we're equipped, ready to be launched by God, tandaan ninyo, Platform for your ministry is not a problem. Kaya ng Lord mag-create ng platform. Tao na kailangan mo, kaya ng Diyos i-release ang mga tao. But sinisigurado niya muna na hindi ka ma-overwhelm ng victory, hindi ka ma-overwhelm ng success. Because if you have no refined character, if your character is not ready to handle overwhelming victories and success or successes, mga kapatid, yan ang magiging daan nang ikababagsak mo. Kaya mas mahalaga sa Diyos ang refinement ng iyong karakter bago kanya i-launch at mahalaga sa Diyos na nag-i-increase ka palagi sa wisdom, stature, favor with God and favor with men so that when you take over, so that when you're being launched by the Lord, you will not be, uh, you will not be stumbled by the, by the successes and victories na meron ka. Instead, you become a channel of blessings and you show to the people, you manifest the glory of God and bringing back glory, honor, and pleasure to Him in everything you do for God. Malina po? Now, number three, there should be clarity of strategies and actions. Our, cla our strategies and actions should be aligned to our purpose and vision. Because if we fail to streamline our priorities, Good things and good intentions are the worst enemies that will cause us to miss God's best gifts for us. Mga kapatid, careful tayo dito. Ang demonyo, payag nang makuha mo yung good, wag mo lang makuha yung best. Alinaw? Payag na siyang makuha mo yung good, wag mo lang makuha ang best. Because best things comes from the Lord. Kaya ho ang labanan sa isang mananampalataya. The worst enemy of best things in your life are the good things. Kaya kailangan matuto tayo mag-streamline ng ating priorities. Although it's good, but do not settle for good. Always settle for the best. Halimbawa, ministry versus entemacy. Alam natin pare-pareho na ang ating ministeryo ay bunga lang ng ating entemacy sa Diyos. But sad to say, marami ngayon. Good bang ministry? Good. But entemacy is the best. Because having entemacy with God is simply receiving the clear instructions, the clear purpose, the clear vision that God wants you to have. So that the moment you do ministry, you secure the presence of God while doing the ministry. And if God is with you in, with, uh, in doing the ministry, then you secure victory. Malinaw. But because some of us, due sa mga turo sa atin na mga hindi po accurate, 
iniisip natin, pag tayo nagme-ministry, tayo na rin ay nag e masi. Mali. Kaya marami hong masisipag sa ministry, pag uwi ng bahay, pagod na pagod, hilahod na hilahod, nagkagawa naman para sa Diyos. At sa tuwing mapapagod ating kinakatwiran, para sa Diyos naman lahat dyan. Alam niyo ba sabi ng Bible, Psalms 100, Serve the Lord with gladness. Ang paglilingkod dapat natin sa Diyos, opo, napapagod ang physical na katawan, pero yung iyong espiritu ay naglulumokso sa tuwa. Why? Because you're serving God with gladness. And how to do this? Do the best, what is best, intimacy with God. Tandaan niyo po ito. Fruitful ministry. Fruitful and powerful ministry is just a byproduct of our intimacy with God. Pansinin ninyo, ang mga mananampalataya na mayroong intimacy sa Diyos, sila po ay very accurate sa paggawa ng ministeryo. Hindi po nila pinapatulan lahat. Kasi sa kanilang intimacy, malinaw na inireveal ng Diyos kung ano lang ang kanilang dapat gawin. Kaya mapapansin nyo, kunti lang po ang kanilang ginagawa. Pero dahil yun ang pinapagawa sa kanila ng Diyos, sila po ay nag enjoy at nagkatagumpay roon. Unlike sa iba na walang entemasi sa Diyos, walang pakikipagniig sa Diyos, dumiretso agad sa ministry, pagod na pagod. Ginagawa ang lahat only to find out na hindi pala yun ang pinapagawa ng Diyos. So parang basketball ko, nagbabasketball po kayo, shoot po kayo ng shoot, ang dami nyo ng shoot, Pero sa ring ng kalaban. So, sino mo may score yung kalaban? Kayo po'y hindi. Kaya marami pong natatalo ng mga mananampalataya by default. Why? Because we do not settle for the best, but we only settle for good. And having in mind, thinking, na, 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 na glorify natin ang Diyos. Mga kapatid, ang pangangaral pong ito ay paalala po sa bawat isa sa atin. Huwag po bara-bara ang trabaho at paglilingkod sa Diyos. Alamin muna, ito ba ang pinapagawa ng Diyos? Ito ba ang ibig ng Diyos na aking unahin? Ito ba ang magbibigay ng karangalan sa Diyos? Kadalasan ho, pag ang karangalan, ang dahilan, ang kadahilanan ay hindi ang Diyos at hindi ang karangalan ng Diyos, malamang yan po ay hindi vision, yan po ay ambisyon. Clarity of purpose and strategies. Okay, clarity of act, strategies and action. James 1.17 Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. Ang plano ng Diyos, ang layunin ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Whether you are good or not, hindi na po yan magbabago. Kasi ang Diyos, pag nagplano, hindi po pabago-bago, di katulad ng tao. Ang yes sa Panginoon, yes forever. Ang no sa Panginoon, ay no forever. Anong ibig sabihin? Napakaganda ng plano ng Diyos sa buhay mo. Ang plano ng Panginoon ay hindi kasaktan bago sa ikaw pagpalain. Bigyan ka ng mabuting hinaharap or a better future, the best future. But, Kailangan clear as crystal sa'yo na gagawin mo ang gusto ng Diyos, hindi ang gusto mo. Mga kapatid, if you want to experience the best plans and purposes of God in your life, then take time, create or make time to be alone with God. Bagay na maraming mananampalataya sa ngayon ay talagang guilty. Time to be alone with God. Spending time to study His Word. Spending time with intimacy with God. And being faithful in attending the fellowship of the believers. Hebrews 10.25 is very clear. Huwag ninyong kaligtaan ang pagtitipon ang mga mananampalataya. Palakasan. Bakit? 
Lalong-lalo na ngayong nalalapit na ang pagdating ng Panginoon. Ano bang merong ginagawa ka na hindi ka makatalo sa gawain? Ano bang ginagawa mo na hindi mo kayang pumunta sa fellowship ng mga lingkod ng Diyos o anak ng Diyos? Iutos ng Diyos yan. Tingin ko, mayroon pa ba na mas mahalaga sa utos ng Diyos? Tingin ko wala. So bakit wala ka? Hindi ka nakadalo. Malamang. Yung utos ng laman mo o di kaya ng demonyo ang ginawa mo. Puro makamundo. So what will happen? Instead of receiving and enjoying the best from God, what happened? You're suffering. Alam nyo, sabi ng iba, pasok, di mo na ako makapasok, di mo na ako makapag-church. Bakit? Eh, kasi sayang eh, double pay. Alam mo ba na yung double pay mo sa mundo? Kaya nang gagawin ng Lord na quadruple, triple? Naintindihan mo, kapatid? Kahit makuha mo yung double pay mo, ang nasatisfy mo lang yung laman mo at ang laman mo walang kasiyahan yan at walang kakontentuhan para yang nicho na walang katapusang nililibingan. But the moment you satisfy your soul, you satisfy your spirit, ang kagalakan buhat sa salita ng Diyos at sa kalakasan na kasama mo mga kapatid sa Panginoon na nagpupulit, sumasamat, na kinig ng salita ng Diyos, at ginagawa ito, ito po hindi kayo bayaran ng pera. Now, tingin sa akin, makuha mo double pay mo, marami hong mas mayaman pa sa'yo. Na ano, walang kasiyahan, walang kagalakan, bagkos, nagtitiis at nahihirapan sa mundong ito. Dadagdag ka pa? Dagayahin mo pa sila? Niligtas ka na ng Diyos, tumingka sa akin. Kayong mga hindi palaging dumadalo sa gawain ng Diyos at pinapabayaan yung pag-aaral sa salita ng Diyos, pakikinig ng salita ng Diyos, pananalangin sa Diyos at entema siya sa Diyos, makinig kayong mabuti. Sa patuloy mong paggawa nito, dinadala mo, hinahaltak mo at Ba't tawag dyan? Hinahatak mo ang sarili mo papunta sa kapahamakan. Maging mga mayayaman sa mundong ito, kailanman ay hindi nakukontento. Because there's a vacuum in the heart of a believer, of a person, that only God can fill. Hindi pera, hindi bahay, hindi kayamanan, kundi Diyos. At ito ang ipinangangaral ko sa iyo sa araw na ito. Diyos ang kailangan mo sa buhay na ito. Hanggat hindi mo masabi sa buhay mo, God is all I need. Lord, you're all I need. Pag hindi mo yan magawa, patuloy kang mabubuhay sa isang klase ng buhay na walang kabuluhan at walang kasiyahan. Ang pangako at paalala ni Pablo, Kung ang pag-asa mo kay Kristo, ako po'y nakikiusap sa lahat ng mananampalatay nakikinig ngayon. Kung ang pag-asa mo kay Kristo ay para sa mundong ito lamang, ikaw na ang pinakakawawang taong na buhay sa balat ng lupa. Ano ito? Paano ito interpret? Mga mananampalataya na walang oras sa panalangin, mananampalataya na walang oras sa salita ng Diyos, mananampalataya na walang oras sa entemasya sa Diyos, mananampalataya na di dumadalo sa gawain ng Diyos. At pagkos puro sa libutan ang inaatupag, pinakakawawa ka. Kung kawawang unbeliever, mas kawawa ka. Naintindihan mo? Yan ang pangungusap ng Diyos sa iyo. Ang lahat ng may pandinig ay makinig sa sinasabi ng Espiritu ng Diyos. The clarity of strategies and actions, failure to receive God's best simply because of the good things but definitely not God's will, or God's ways will, for one, distract us. Alam mo, pag hindi yung best ni Lord ang ginagawa mo, hindi ka looban ng Diyos, nadidistract ka. Pag sinasabi, nadidistract, wala kang joy. Natapos mo nga gawain, pero wala kang kagalakan sa puso mo. Ano pa? Pag hindi mo pa rin tinigil na nadidistract ka na, madidelay ka. Ano madidelay? Yung fulfillment ng best things, best plans. Excuse me po. Yung best plans ng Diyos sa buhay mo, madidelay. 
Ano pa? Pag yung delay ay hindi mo pa rin ma-address, madi-derail, madiskaril na. Because there are people thinking that they are still in the Lord, but in reality, they are very far away from Him. Ang sabi ni Kristo, nasa Bible to ha? Ang mga taong ito ay pinupuri ako sa kanilang mga labi. So, balit ang kanilang puso ay napakalayo sa akin. It's in the Word. Maybe you are thinking that you are still a son or a daughter of the living God because you receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. But your deeds, your actions, manifest that you are no longer walking with Him. I release this word to you for you to think of yourself and for you to think kung ano yung dapat mong gawin sa buhay mo. The moment na hindi mo i-address yung distraction, yung delay, at saka derail, then it will destroy your destiny. And once destiny is destroyed, then you are living a miserable life on earth but believing that you are a son of God. Mga kapatid, ito ang mensahe ng Diyos sa bawat isa sa atin. Huwag nating palampasin. Gawin agad po natin. Balik tayo sa purpose. Anong purpose ng Diyos? Mahalin natin siya ng buong puso, buong lakas, buong pag-iisip, buong kaluluwa. At mahalin natin ang ating kapwa gaya ng pagmamahal natin sa ating sarili, dalhin natin sila sa Panginoon. Wag laman tayo mga mananampalataya na lang ang magkakasama-sama. Pansinin ninyo mga mananampalataya, puro kaibigan mo, puro believer. Ilahat naman kayo na katanggap na ng buhay na walang hanggan. Ang ating abutin, yung mga wala pa kay Kristo, mga hindi pa nakakilala sa Diyos, ibahagi natin. But bago natin ibahagi, make sure that we are behaving good and accurate sons to our spiritual father, to our God and King and Nagliliwanag ang ilaw mo, yung testimony mo, at ikaw ay nagiging asin. You create change. You are an agent of transformation or agents of change wherever you go. Then, if you're ready, and you are being captured with a vision that God wants you to have to go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them everything that God had commanded you, then you're ready not just to go in, on, in the Philippines, but even in other nations because you carry the mandate and the vision of God in your life and even in your spirit. God bless you all. Your table will never run out of food. There will also be food at your table. Wherever you go, God be with you. Whatever you do, God bless you and all the works of your hands. Remember, God still sits on the throne and He can never be dethroned. And this God who created the heavens and the earth is none other than our Heavenly Father. God bless you all. This is my prayer in Jesus' most precious holy name. Amen and amen and amen. Shalom.